When ESA saw what NASA could no longer see, the silence between them felt heavier than space. The observation was simple. A spectral scan from the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, measuring methane over the Northern Plains, the data was clean, timestamped, verified. Yet its values contradicted every American record from the same region, where NASA's sensors read emptiness, ESA's instruments saw life in motion. The anomaly began as a whisper in the numbers, a faint oscillation near the noise floor, too regular to be random. For days, the European team at Darmstadt thought it was interference from solar activity. Then they noticed the pattern repeated precisely 12 minutes after NASA's last observation window ended, as if the signal had waited for one eye to close before opening to another. When the results reached Houston, the room went still. NASA's Mars Atmospheric and Volatile Evolution Probe, MAVEN, had just gone dark in safe mode during a mild solar storm. Its instruments shut down seconds before the trace gas orbiter began recording. Two systems, two agencies, one window of silence, filled by data no one could explain. ESA released the spectra quietly, without commentary. It showed trace bands of methane that matched no known geological source, shifting in sync with Mars local dawn, to NASA's filters, those bands did not exist. To ESA's, they sang clearly. It was not a question of error, it was a question of sight. The moment one network blinked, another began to see. And somewhere between those visions, the planet seemed to answer the act of observation itself. Precision rose, certainty fell. The trace gas orbiter was designed for patience. Each orbit lasted about two hours, Circling Mars at an altitude of nearly 200 miles, mapping the faintest signatures within its thin atmosphere, its detectors could identify one molecule of methane among a billion others. NASA's MAVEN probe used similar instrumentation, but a different philosophy. It filtered data aggressively, stripping out any signal that could not be confirmed twice. ESA engineers often joked that the American system sought truth by subtraction, while theirs sought it by endurance. Both approaches worked until the numbers began to disagree. During a joint observation cycle in late spring, MAVEN recorded no trace gases in the Northern Hemisphere. Six minutes later, ExoMars passed over the same region. Its spectrometer lit up with peaks that theoretically could not exist. When the files were cross-referenced, both timestamps were valid, both instruments calibrated, both datasets genuine, yet the results cancelled each other out. What one saw, the other erased. The teams compared everything, optical alignment, temperature drift, exposure length, solar angle, nothing explained the difference. In theory, the two spacecraft could not disagree about the same light. Photons do not choose their observers. But the data suggested otherwise. When NASA's algorithms processed the ESA feed through their filters, the methane bands vanished. When ESA ran the same data through its own model, the lines returned stronger and sharper. It was not the planet that changed, it was the act of recognition itself. To confirm, both agencies planned a synchronized observation. At precisely 3.41 universal time, MAVEN and ExoMars would cross the Martian equator within 30 seconds of each other. Both would record the same horizon, the same atmosphere, the same moment in time. When the data came back, ESA's image contained a flare, a spectral spike near the infrared band, precise and elegant. NASA's version showed only static, the paradox deepened. Two eyes on the same world, one blind by design, the other seeing more than it could explain. Every calibration improved clarity, but none restored agreement. In pursuit of precision, perception had fractured. Numbers aligned, belief drifted. The joint review was meant to reconcile the data. Instead, it split the agencies. NASA's engineers opened the meeting with confidence. The absence of methane, they argued, was not an error, but a triumph of accuracy. Filtering noise is what made science reliable. ESA's team disagreed. If a signal repeats across orbits and instruments, it is not noise, it is persistence. The argument began in thresholds and assumptions. NASA's model dismissed any reading below three parts per billion. ESA's accepted anything above one. In that narrow space between those numbers, an entire world appeared and vanished. One team saw the atmosphere, the other saw illusion. Dr. Alina Martens from Darmstadt presented a frame-by-frame -frame reconstruction. She showed that every time MAVEN's filter engaged, 
a faint delay emerged in the spectrometer feed, microseconds long but consistent. That delay coincided with the moment the methane line faded. It was as though the algorithm anticipated what it wanted to remove, a blindness scripted into clarity. NASA countered with the demonstration of their calibration algorithm, projecting equations across the conference wall. Each step looked flawless, yet when they ran ESA's raw data through their pipeline, the methane still disappeared when they reversed the process, feeding MAVEN's empty spectra through ESA's tools, a trace reappeared, ghost-like, matching the same coordinates on the Martian grid. A physicist from the European Space Agency proposed an unsettling possibility. The filters themselves might be creating interference between systems, not electronically, but conceptually. Two models of perception, both valid, cancelling each other's existence. If observation defines data, he asked quietly, what happens when two forms of observation disagree? Silence held the room. Somewhere in that pause, the question stopped being technical. It became philosophical. Was the methane on Mars a feature of the planet or of the mind that sought it? Could the algorithms be mirroring the cognitive bias of their creators, translating belief into numerical certainty? No one wanted to say the word, but it lingered in every discussion entanglement. If information can exist in superposition, perhaps perception can too. The meeting adjourned without resolution. Two agencies, one world, two versions of reality both proven, both impossible to reconcile. Logic tightened, clarity dissolved. Two weeks later, a third observer entered the argument. The Hubble Space Telescope, orbiting Earth at roughly 350 miles, was scheduled for a calibration test using Mars as a reference point. Its instruments were never meant for atmospheric detection, yet when the images were processed through near-infrared filters, a faint spectral band appeared at the same coordinates flagged by ESA, but 12 minutes later, the planet seemed to echo itself. At the European Space Operations Centre, analysts overlaid all three timelines. ESA's reading first and ASA's absence second, Hubble's faint trace third, the pattern was not random, it formed a perfect phase offset, each observation trailing the other by the same interval. When plotted, it resembled a waveform, oscillating through time instead of space in. No physical mechanism could explain it. Light travels only once, it does not wait to be seen, yet somehow, the act of measurement itself appeared to ripple forward, like memory travelling faster than evidence. To eliminate bias, ESA sent the raw data to the Japanese Aerospace Agency for blind analysis. Their team confirmed the oscillation, the same timing, the same fading amplitude. Only the instruments that had previously measured nothing showed nothing again. It was as if awareness itself determined what existed. Some theorists called it observer hysteresis, the inertia of perception where the echo of a measurement persists even after its cause is gone. Others suggested a deeper paradox, that Mars was responding not to signals but to anticipation, to the collective expectation of being seen. A physicist at JPL whispered a quiet heresy, maybe the universe compensates for curiosity. His remark was struck from the official transcript, but not from memory. The next test run confirmed the timing drift once more. Every attempt to coordinate the sensors only deepened the lag. The closer humanity tried to synchronise its sight, the further perception slipped. The planet had not changed, the instruments had, and somewhere between calibration and belief, a new constant emerged, the cost of looking too closely. Awareness expanded, coherence fell. The confrontation between the agencies faded into quiet cooperation. Competition for truth became an inquiry into perception itself. In the silence of late-night data sessions, a few scientists began to admit what the numbers implied. The instruments were not only measuring Mars, they were mirroring their own design philosophies. NASA built certainty through subtraction, ESA built awareness through inclusion. Both revealed truth, but from opposite directions. When combined, they produced interference, a pattern neither could claim as their own. One researcher compared it to two eyes focusing on a single point. Depth appears only when perspectives disagree, but if disagreement becomes absolute, the image collapses, vision turns blind. At a conference in Geneva, the debate moved beyond data. Philosophers, physicists and systems engineers gathered around a single question. How much precision can knowledge survive? 
Each improvement in calibration brought more stability, yet less coherence. When the instruments became flawless, reality fractured. When they tolerated imperfection, patterns returned. The more they sought control, the more observations slipped into paradox. ESA released a paper proposing that the divergence between probes might represent a cognitive boundary. It was the point where two systems of logic could no longer share a common world. Not human error, but epistemic geometry. The moment precision rises beyond the capacity of meaning to hold it. For decades, science treated subjectivity as noise. Now, noise had become the only trace of truth left visible. A senior NASA engineer summarized the paradox quietly. We built eyes that see farther than we can think. The room was silent after that. In the pursuit of perfect knowledge, the agencies had built a mirror large enough to contain their own uncertainty. It showed everything except the reason for looking. Truth neared, assurance receded. In the months that followed, the argument ended without resolution. NASA archived its silence. ESA archived its vision. Both were right and both were blind. The methane band still drift across the Martian sky, faint as memory, patient as time. Sometimes they appear, sometimes they do not. The difference no longer matters. In a quiet note to the European Council, an engineer wrote, Perhaps the universe does not hide its answers. It waits for our instruments to stop demanding them. The Deep Space Network and the ExoMars Relay now transmit side by side. Their data streams overlap, merge and blur. Every frame, every pixel, every line of code carries a trace of two philosophies, to see by filtering or to see by trusting. When the feeds are combined, a strange calm image appears, a horizon neither bright nor dark, the space between certainty and doubt. It is not what Mars shows, it is what the act of seeing reveals about the seer. The clearer the image, the quieter the meaning. Precision rose, certainty fell. When ESA saw what NASA could no longer see, it was not the planet that changed, it was the observer. Learning that clarity and blindness are the same mirror seen from opposite sides, 